Um, this is me. You may have seen me on Stack Overflow as Symbolics. Um, I try to be one of the friendly, helpful people. Um, a lot of people have put off, but I try to help out. Um, two of my packages on there, Google Way, which is an interface to Google Maps from R. Um, there's one image that's not rendered, actually. This one here. That's Google Polyline. And it's a way to make polylines out of uh, coordinates. And GeoJSON SF, which converts between GeoJSON and SF objects. So in the spirit of not letting your content get in the way of a good GIF, <laughs> remember as a kid when you're told to aim high and, <laughs> and just go for it, and then you try and apply, you get it, you try and apply that to your everyday life, and sometimes it doesn't quite work out. Um, so like you have a, a good idea for an app or something you want to build, and you go out, grab all the data you can, you do your manipulations, and then you press plot. And you end up with a blank screen, and you wait. And you wait a bit longer. And you think, should something be happening? Is it crashed? Why is it not falling apart? Do I crash out? How long do I wait? This is quite a common scenario for me, um, but it shouldn't be, because I should have learned by now. But in this example, I'm trying to plot all the postcodes in Australia, which is about just over 300,000 on, onto a map. And your browser and your renderer doesn't like it. It just can't handle all that data. So in this example, what's the solution? Um, but that's, a, that's a genuine question. I don't have the answer to that. I'm hoping someone else here does. How do you plot thousands and thousands of, of images on a map? Anyone? Um, I, I may have a, a way to go. Sorry, that echoey. A potential solution where I've been experimenting with... <clears throat> Is that better? Experimenting with, with <laughs> uh, WebGL technologies, which is GPU-based technologies for, for plotting maps. Um, in this example, there are three million circles on the Google map. And it renders quick, but it doesn't flow very smoothly. Um, but at least it renders. And I think it's the way to go. But I don't have it fully working yet. And this is just a prototype. Um, but I'm, I'm going to try and get there with that. But given what? We can't do, what can we do? So I've got an app that I need to reload, because it's disconnected. Um, this is a Shiny using a Google map through the Google Way package, obviously. And who here, this might be the hardest question of the day, who here uses Google Maps? Okay, you put your hand up. What do you use Google Maps for? And here's a hint of the answer I want. Navigations, yes, and directions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the R as well, some of it is like, uh, like what we use Google Maps mm -hmm. to represent some of our uh, uh, to points in the energy demand. Okay. Like okay, cool. So that was a bit more detailed answer than I wanted, but <laughs> direct, he got there with directions. Um, in this example, I've got three completely random addresses loaded up. I've got an origin destination and an intermediate waypoint. And what this is doing, it's sending those addresses to Google. Google's sending the results back, and it's plotting the route for you. Um, remember, it's completely random. Shouldn't have clicked there. Um, so that's using Google Directions API. Another example I've got is um, a slightly more obscure example of the API. It's, say you're given a trace of coordinates um, and then you'll see down in this section, they're not quite on the road. Ignore that marker. In fact, I'm going to reload that because I don't want that to happen. Uh, yep, directions. Google has this function called snap to roads, which will take your coordinates and put, plot them towards the nearest road, which is a nice handy little um, feature, I think. So those two examples show how you can interact with Google's API and get data back into your Shiny. Another example of using this is you can interact with the 
uh, map. You can make plot markers to define locations. And trust me, these are, again, completely random. And what you can do here is the map is recognizing where you're clicking on, and it's sending the coordinates back to your R session, and then you can do whatever you want with those coordinates. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to connect them up with a line. And similarly, as well as markers, you can... My trackpad has a habit of going straight into my trash can, so I, sometimes I click randomly and it'll go to the trash can. <laughs> you can draw the line directly, and some of you may have seen already why I've chosen this particular region of Melbourne. There we go, it's gone to the trash can again. And again, that's sent the coordinates back to your R session, and it's plotted what you've just drawn on the map. And what a coincidence. <laughs> Definitely didn't plan that. OK, clear the map. Um, but why am I really here, trying to plot spatial data on a map? What I'm doing here now is loading in a shapefile, which is all the, it's all the postcodes in Queensland, but I'm only showing you a few of them with the inner city of Brisbane, because showing the whole of Queensland would take a while to render. We'll get that white screen, and you'll all leave, and I'll cry. Now, I mean, there's not, nothing special here. If you've used Leaflet, then I designed Google Way to work in pretty much the same way. You just define your add polygons function, then you set all your options, and then the map just works. Um, one thing I like, I don't know if you will, but I like this mouse over group option, which is when you hover the mouse over, it will highlight the group that you've defined. And in this case, it's colored by the type of postcode, the, the residential uh, or parkland, whatever. So we've got some data behind our map. We can interact with the map. Therefore, we can interact with the data. And a typical uh, question one might have, let me scroll up slightly, is say if you want to know information about a particular region. So can I get a, someone from the audience shout out somewhere in Queensland? Gold Coast. Gold Coast. And because this is Google, we get all of Google's database behind it. And it sent the request to Google. It's got the coordinates back. And it's wherever Google said the Gold Coast was, it's given us that polygon surrounding that point. So it's done. The actual code that's happened is you observe, you send in your shiny, you say you observe where the user clicks with these Latin longs. You make a spatial object, in this case it's just a spatial point, and then you do a spatial join with your polygon data set with that point, and it tells you which polygon and point are joined, and it gives you the polygon back. Now, this is fine for this small example of just the Queensland postcode, but when you want to load in the whole of Australia, and not just the postcodes, you want to load in other statistical regions. Uh, that's a lot of data, and as we know from, well, from our studio's talk yesterday, you don't want all your data sat in your app. You want it sat in a database. And that's no different to spatial data. You just store it in a spatial database. So in this, I'm using MongoDB as my spatial database, and in this example, I'd have all the postcodes of Australia loaded. So can someone shout me out another anywhere in Australia? 5090. What's that? New, New South Wales, is that? Any, uh, well, it doesn't matter. Here's an example. <laughs> <laughs> for, for now, you grew up here, okay? Um, and because this data is um, now all in our app, we can just explore it as we would we. Here I just plotted a few of the columns as an info box. Um, there are many things we can do with this. Uh, too many to talk about in a 15 minute talk. Um, but what I will say is currently this is uh, sending this query to the Mongo database and it's using my beautiful GeoJSON SF package to turn the GeoJSON it returns into an SF object. Which is fine, but when you want to start loading um, more objects, let me zoom out. Uh, 
Uh, clear the map. Trash can. Uh, I'll get rid of this. Say you want to draw a similar thing. I'm going to draw a circle on the map. It's going to send a query to Mongo database to get all the polygons which intersect with that circle I've just drawn. And you see a query running in the bottom right corner. Because we're asking for more data, it's obviously going to take slightly longer. And there we go, we've plotted all the... Uh, these aren't actually postcodes, I got that wrong. These are a, a bit slightly bigger region. It's called statistical area two, actually, if you're familiar with the data set. Um, now, that took six seconds to run, which actually is quite good. And I expected it to take about 15 seconds. So if this next example takes six seconds, then ignore this part of the talk. Because <laughs> my point is, you can return the whole SF object, or you can return these uh, polylines. So if I'm going to do the same query again, but using returning polylines, roughly get the same area. Yeah, it's going to be about six seconds. Five seconds. It's a second quicker. My point stands. Um, when I was testing this, it took 15 seconds to return the SF object, and then four seconds to return these uh, polylines. Now, the point of a polyline is it's an encoding of a spatial object, of, a, of coordinates, actually. So in this example, I've got lon and lat coordinates. I run my encode coordinate function, and it gives me this string, um, which is a smaller representation of the data. And hopefully, you can see this. Here I've got, I'm reading in a simple feature object. It's a North Carolina data set that comes with the SF package. I'm doing two encoding functions. One. Um, keeps all the attributes, one strips off all the attributes. And then here you can see the relative sizes of all those objects. And the encoded objects are much smaller than the simple feature object. And the nice thing is this polyline encoding is an algorithm designed by Google, and their maps natively support this. So you can just plot that polyline, and the map will plot it for you. Um, and what another trick I do is... This is the spatial information stored in the database. It's GeoJSON, if anyone's familiar with GeoJSON. And as well as the coordinate information, I also store that encoded polyline. So that I can query it on the coordinates, but only return that polyline. So I'm returning much less data into my R session. And to show what you should have seen in the shiny example, the benefit of doing that, is I'm going to show you the two queries um, for defining a circle here. Again, at a radius of one kilometer. Yep. And I'm, one, I'm defining the Mongo database query to find all the polygons intersecting that circle. And I do a benchmark of doing a standard um, Mongo query to return the SF object. And I do a, a query just to return the polyline object. And you can see that it should have been a tenth quicker in that shiny example, but I think the connection probably played a part in that. So there are things we can do. Um, try not to make your browser angry. That's an angry browser <laughs> by trying to plot everything. Um, there are solutions out there, such as using WebGL technologies to try and get all this stuff plotted. I don't know how to do that yet. I'm trying to work on it. If anyone has the solution, please let me know. Um, I have seen recently the e-charts or e4 charts package that does something similar, um, which I'm going to try and steal some code from. And as we, a lot of us probably already know, don't, you don't want to get every user to download all your data every time they load the session. So geospatial databases can perform pretty good. And if you store your data there, then your users aren't getting all the data down every time they open your app. Thank you. The question is, can this app handle raster data? Um, not at the moment. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of it, and at some point I will, but not yet. Actually, in, in relation to my to Google Waste package, it can't. But obviously, apps can handle raster images. Mine can't. Yeah, 
Uh, yes, the question is, have I looked into simplifying the polygons? Um, yes, absolutely. And the polyline actually loses information as well. Um, so it's not, if you want to do precision plots, don't use that polyline. But yes, I absolutely do reduce my polylines and polygons, yeah. <laughs>